Are you looking to join a boat club in the Tampa Bay area? Well, let me tell you, I did Freedom Boat Club for about two years and I wanna give you the five things that you need to know about joining a boat club so that you don't make a costly mistake. By the way, my name is Chad Fienberg and I'm a real estate agent and team owner in the Tampa area. If you'd like to know more about the Tampa real estate market, whether you're moving here or relocating within the area, shoot me a message at the contact below and I'm happy to talk real estate with you. Also, if you're looking into boating, let me know the first place you want to visit with a boat uh, in the comments below. Love to check that out. So let's talk about these five things that you need to know while you're thinking about getting into a boat club. And like I said, my experience was with Freedom Boat Club. We did it for about two and a half years um, after moving here. Um, so I'm going to break some of those benefits and, and negatives <laughs> down here in this video today. So number one is location access. If you own a boat, you're stuck generally to either where you're docking it, you know, whether it's a high and dry or uh, whether you have a house with a, you know, with a, with a boat, um, boat lift, or if you have a trailer, you can go anywhere, but there's obviously a lot of headaches trailering it to and from and putting the boat in. Uh, so location access is huge with Freedom Boat Club. You, if for, for Freedom Boat Club of Tampa Bay, they have like 30 locations everywhere from south of St. Pete into Tampa all the way up to Crystal River. And you can use those locations um, basically unlimited throughout the year within your reservation ability. They get four reservations you can book at a time. So that is huge. And then there's reciprocal. where So you can book a boat anywhere that Freedom Boat Club is in the United States um, from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And there, you know, there's a, there's a Freedom Boat Club in Pittsburgh. I've seen them, you know, in California, North Carolina, that you, there's a huge array of them. Now, one that most people are interested in reciprocal is probably in the Keys. Um, when, as of this video, or as I was in the boat club, there was only one location in the Keys. They had about six boats and only one of them was available for reciprocal access. Needless to say, it was very heavily booked. You basically had to book the boat about two to six months out from when you plan to go and use up one of your reservations. Um, you know, it could be possible to get one sooner if a hole opened up or if you were calling diligently, you know, to try to get one. But, you know, it generally was hard. You really had to plan ahead with using the keys, just a word of warning. But that said, it was so nice here in the Tampa area to be, go, to be able to go out uh, Tierra Verde, basically down in that area. There's not one there anymore, but there's a few around there. Um, to be able to hit Shell Key, Fort DeSoto, and Egmont Key, and then go up to Tarpon and hit Ancloak Key, go out of Clearwater and hit um, Honeymoon and all of those different areas that you can hit up there. Uh, and then still go up to Crystal River and do Three Sister Springs and, and, and all the good fishing out of Crystal River. Um, and obviously Homosassa and Hernando and all these other places. It, and, and then you can still hit the bay and hit Beer Can Island and go down uh, up and down the river walk. So the ability to just book a boat wherever you wanted to go out of, you show up and it's ready to go for you and your family and friends whenever you get there. It was uh, pretty, pretty cool, I will say. So location access is definitely a huge thing. Um, number two would probably be that you need to know you gotta plan ahead. Uh, it's definitely tough to grab a boat on the day of. On the weekend, it's almost virtually impossible. It's not, it's not impossible, but it's very, very hard. They're, they're, they're well taken up over the weekend. Um, so for us, you know, we just never guaranteed it when we, we we did probably try it i would say in the two years maybe 10 times to book it the day of and eight of those seven of those tens we we did get one but we i just never let my hopes um get up with it just in case i was disappointed so don't come in thinking especially on the weekend that you'll be able to just book a boat day of i'm not saying you know obviously we had probably a 75 percent success rate um i really you know would call multiple docks and try to make it work but it wasn't easy to book a boat the day of you definitely want to make sure you're planning ahead and reserving your boats out um the days that you want um stress would be number three um, it's actually in my opinion much less stressful to be a member of a boat club um, it's so nice to not have to worry about the maintenance, about putting a boat in, taking it out, cleaning it up when you're done. If something does break, you know, there's a deductible. Uh, we did the peace of mind plan. I think it was about 300 bucks a year. So I think you have a much lower deductible. It was, um, oh, I don't even remember. I think it was like $500 deductible or something like that. Uh, we lost, you know, an anchor, the, the rope had frayed and, and it pulled off once and we weren't billed for that anchor, um, you know, just from excessive use, you know, whereas if it was your boat and over time the anchor got weak and the anchor falls off you got to go buy a new anchor you know so 
those little things that peace of mind, you know, when we would go out, if the boat would break, we could call them and they'd come out uh, and get us or bring us a new one if there was still enough time. That, that peace of mind where it's, you know, it's not yours, that bring out another thousand isn't so much, you know, your ownership is definitely, um, it's nice. Uh, the negative side of that is some of the, um, some of the boat club members don't take care of the boats too well. Uh, so that is, uh, some of the boats can get beat up pretty quickly, um, you know, but generally you start to learn which ones are in good shape and which ones aren't, um, and you know which ones to book over time. I would say ultimately it was more stress-free, especially coming back at the end of your long boat day. You drop it off, you tip the dock, uh, the dock person. You know, we, we typically tip around $15, $20 um, to them. They clean the Cheetos, they, you know, do clean the garbage out. Um, we would often put it in a bag and help them, but still it was just much less stressful than having to pull up a boat on the trailer or put it up on the um on on the uh, boat lift and clean it all up that day um you know that that was a big difference um one negative though which would lead me to the fourth thing which is actually a con and a frustrating moment for me was setting up so even though it was nice that you could just jump on a boat at any time or you could uh pull in and just you know give the boat back setting up up the Bluetooth, the fishing nav, you know, if you're doing your navigation for fishing or getting your rod set up. It, for me, I always felt rushed because there's a bunch of people getting on at the time. You are typically because you're always coming around a similar time to other people. And there, you know, you get on the boat, you're trying to get your kids situated or everybody situated, you're connecting to the Bluetooth so they have music and you feel the good boat vibe. And, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a little stressful, I think, setting up um, because it's not the same setup if you're on a different boat every time. If you book the same boat, maybe you have the Bluetooth saved and stuff like that. But for us, we were often doing different locations. So for me, just you know, piloting the boat that it was minor, you know, it was worth dealing with, but it was a little stressful. It would be nice to have my own, my, my, my boat that's set up the way I want and I could just go out and it's the same every time. Very minor inconvenience, but something I think worth talking about and noting. Uh, but the fifth thing that you need to know really is the cost. In my opinion, I don't know how you can beat the cost. I, I don't know their current pricing, but it's always around three fifty, four hundred dollars a month with a, you know, the, the down payment of four to six grand, give or take. Um, you're going to spend more than four to six grand on a boat. Pretend that's even a down payment on a boat. And then you have a monthly payment on the boat that would probably be more than that. Or if you're high and drying, if you're putting a boat at a high and dry, it's going to be 300 plus a month just to store it there. So, you know, and then we got the, the maintenance and repairs and insurance and all this other stuff that goes along with it. I don't know how you could possibly beat the cost uh, unless you buy a super cheap boat and you trailer it everywhere. Obviously, you could do it that way. So um, to get access to center consoles, um, deck boats, pontoons, um, you know, even uh, the Zodiac inflatable boats, uh, you know, a lot of them are you know, a lot of the center consoles are around 22 foot. Um, it's, it's a pretty sizable boat for that price. I don't see how you could possibly beat it. So the value to me was worth it. Um, 10 times over anytime I did the math on boats I would want they would generally cost by the time I got done adding everything up about three times you could maybe say two in some case but generally three times the price because I wanted to high and dry it and other things like that the cost of what I was paying for the boat club so highly recommend um, highly recommend it for value so you know this is just our experience. We loved the boat club. Um, we, we did we did stop doing it because our kids were getting to an age where they weren't enjoying it as much as I think I was. Um, and we were spending every weekend going out on the boat instead of doing some other things. So for the current time, we have pulled back and I wanted to make this video summarizing my two and a half year venture through Freedom Boat Club. Uh, I miss it every day, <laughs> but we will get back out on the water, um, whether it's through a boat club or buying our own boat. Um, you know, those are kind of the, the pros and cons that I would consider whenever I'm going back um, into the market. So, but the value is definitely there. It's, it's an easy, quick, easy way to um, get in the water everywhere you want, see everything with an array of boats, whether you're fishing or need a pontoon for kind of just beach, uh, beaching with your friends. There's uh, the, the memories that we've had uh, in that two and a half years are absolutely irreplaceable. So highly recommend it. Um, and as I said in the beginning of the video, I'm a real estate agent and team owner in the Tampa real estate market. So if there's anything we can do to help you, you know, relative to real estate, so don't hesitate to contact me below. Feel free to reach out. Uh, even if you just want me to break down more about the boat club or some different aspects of Tampa, happy to help and be your local resource. So thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on the next video.
Thank you.